this is your Cowboy Church of the Year. Yes, this is your Cowboy Church of the Year, transcribed featuring Stuart Hamblin, Columbia Recording Artist, with Susie Hamblin, the Prairie Choir, the Rush Arbor Quartet, the Blue Bonnet, and the music of Daryl Rice and his orchestra. Bringing to you a half hour of down-to-earth music written especially for your enjoyment by one of America's greatest composers, Stuart Hamlin. So when this person comes, what will be by his side? I'll trade the rags for the gold and gold and a man to run away. When you see me fall asleep, say amen, but don't you weep. That's so many million years that I can count on. Amen. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Yes, friends, this is your cowboy church riding on the long arm of radio right into your home, and we hope deep into your heart. You know, we've got an awful lot of members of this church, but there's one in particular that we'd like to tell you about. He's the pillar of the church, so to speak, because he's the one who makes it all possible. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Munch TV. I'd like to tell you a little story. You know, I lost a radio job one time in California that has helped for 21 years because I refused to read certain commercials that were handed to me. You know why? Because on October the 18th, 1950, I became a Christian. And there's no such thing as a 1950. I got back into radio only on one condition, and that condition was that I'd be allowed to give the commercials and that I'd be allowed to choose the sponsor. And I chose Munch TV because I've owned one for some time. I know the public wants to save every dime they can when they buy a product, and in buying a Munch TV, you save a lot of money. You don't have money to sell the birds, and I knew it. Munch TV knew it, too, when he started out four years ago. And today's the biggest direct TV organization in the world. No dealer sells a month's TV other than the factory office itself. And when you call the factory office, they will send a man out within the hour to give you a free home and demonstration. If you purchase the month's TV set, they will service it when you call. Now, I know, for I've made it my business to find out these things. So why not call the factory office right now for a free home demonstration, and they will call to your home within the hour. And now, Brother Rice, will you get the prairie choir to rise? And let's pipe this number in the key of about uh, half a D. You'll find it in your joy book, folks, on page 8. And, Brother John, uh, give us the pitch pipe on the tuba in about uh, half a D, will you? By the very act you do, you can crucify. And if you don't know, you never friend your hand. Once a man named Pontius Pilate tried to go to sleep one night. He stood before a white bull, all his household heard him cry. I've washed my hands for hours, but I still can't understand. I can never, never change my half-blood upon my hands. Blood upon your hands. Do you dare to take his holy name in vain? By the very act you do, you can crucify him. Every day you try to see just like they did that awful night. Every wrong you should bring tears up to the man they crucify. Like Pontius in the darkness, you'll never understand why you go to meet your maker with his blood upon your hands. Yes, that blood upon your hands. Do you say you say you name in vain? By the very act you do, you can crucify him. And if you know right, you'll never cleanse your hands. And when you see the light in sight, and you hear that thunder roll, the God that through the heavens is the keeper of your soul. When you walk up to your maker in that happy golden land, you find the gates won't open if there's blood upon your hands. If there's blood upon your hands, then do you dare to take his holy name in vain? By the very act you do, and in your life you'll never find your hands. Man, do I love to hear that tuba and that banjo front. Amen. Thank you, Brother Dooley. Thank you. And that reminds me, Brother Rice, do you remember where the first time we sang that number was? I sure do. It was over at Pocalote. That's right. 
In fact, I'd like to tell our listeners we were all invited over to Pogolody to one of those great big camp meetings. Did anybody ever go to one of them? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We had a time that time. That was when the folks would bring their vittles and a great big white tub, planned to stay three weeks. In fact, uh, it was over in Pocolodi. What was that little old man's name, Daryl? That little bit? Uh, Brother Gold. Right, right. <laughs> Brother Gold. You know, I believe his wife used to cut his hair with an electric fan. Oh, Daryl. <laughs> it looked like he was always walking around in an updraft. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you boys ought to be ashamed of yourselves. You enjoyed plenty of their fried chicken. You remember it? It was his little old wife who gave you the idea for the best song ever, too. Oh, you read it during that meeting, remember? That's where you wrote, we bought my soul at Calvary. Yeah, that's but, right. But what are you talking about his little wife for? You know that woman had shoulders only like a football guard? Yeah, but she really loved yeah, the Yeah, she man. carried old brother go out there around. The way she got those shoulders that she had to plow the rest for you work it in some other way every morning before breakfast. So... Wait a minute, woman. Why don't you just step up with a brush job of course that and sing it? Well, all right, I will. And well, all right, then it. no buts about it. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Susie Hamlin and the brush job of course singing He Bought My Soul at Cal. He bought my soul through death at There's a cross for everyone to bear, but there's a heaven for each soul to share. There's a place in heaven waiting me. I got it through. Calvary, the drop of blood brought me a million years. I saw a boy who shed a tear. He loosed the chains that fettered you and me. Days are long and often filled with care. I talk to him and with each wondrous prayer. He bids me stay and gives new strength to me. He bought my soul. By the way, friends, speaking about that camp meeting we made, uh, I remember it was over there running to a little old tiny fellow who made a very potent statement. He said, uh, I'd rather be a partner with the Lord than own all the valleys and the hills and the meadows in the whole wide world. Amen. You wrote a song about that too, didn't you, Stuart? That's right, buddy. Do you always get your ideas for songs from people? Nearly always. For instance, uh, that little old man who made that remark was wearing old threadbare clothing. He now. But he came in that camp meeting and was there for the first day. In fact, he didn't leave till, as we say down south, till the last duck died. I wonder where he is now. Well, that's been two or three years ago, hasn't it? Uh, that's been over that long. He was in his 80s. Uh, I believe he was in his 80s then. But there's one thing for sure. If he's not making camp meetings on his earth anymore, he's not going to be short when they hold that big one in the sky. Yeah, and it's just like he said as he stood there under an oak tree. By the campfire, 
Nothing in this world matters unless you're really a partner with the Lord. Why be so satisfied with just the crumbs of life when you can wear a crown, be a partner with a Lord? Why go stumbling on in your heart, no song? All day long when you're partners with the Lord. Though your clothes may be old and ragged, and that coat may look tattered and torn, you have a new one a coming with a golden lining when you wake up some great morn. Why that deep despair? Why not just say a prayer? You'll find that somebody cares when you're a partner with the Lord. Why be so satisfied with just a bit of crumbs of life? When someday you could wear a crown, be a partner with the Lord. Why go stumbling home in your heart? No happy song. Why, friends, you'll hear music all day long when you're a partner with the Lord. Though your clothes may be old and ragged, and that coat may look tattered and torn, you have a new one coming with a golden light when you wake up some day morn. Why that deep despair? Why not just cry? Every man to his own task, and how right she was. Personally, I like to think of myself as a writer and a salesman. In writing these songs, I'm trying to sell you an idea. That is the idea of going to the church of your faith. And through selling you, well, I'd like to remind you that it's through your patronage of the people who make this program possible that you're able to help us keep the old bell in the belfry of the cowboy church ringing every day. <laughs> Here's the Bryce Arbor Quartet. To turn to page four in your joy books, boys. Uh, they're going to do a little number for you folks entitled, There's a Lot More Laying Down Than There Is Up for Walking Around. Hey, Mr. Stewart. Yeah, Brother Duncan. Uh, where in the world did you get an idea for a song with that kind of a title? Strange but true. I wrote that on a fishing trip when I got the boys' note. And when you got the boys' note, you must have written it laying down. Well, I didn't know anything sacred. Can't you keep a few things quiet? 
You know, besides, Brother Duncan, I didn't know that the stuff on the banks of that lake would set a man fire. Well, you're a fire, all right, from stem to stern. Brother Duncan, I must have sat down in acres of that stuff. Sat down, and you're sure you wasn't stunning yourself. You didn't say no <laughs> twice to that one. You know, I could actually sue the doctor that told me uh, uh, to put that medicine on. For and what? Well, he, he never told me to put it on in the backyard. Why? Well, he said uh, be sure and give it plenty of air. He well, did it certainly say. got plenty of air after he rubbed his own circle to the backyard four times before I could flag him down with a dish towel. But you came out with a title for a song. Ooh, but what a title. There's a lot more laying down than there is up walking around. Mm. Now, what kind, what kind of a title is that? What does it mean? Well, you see, Brother Duncan, in the graves of the world, there's a lot more what people... Why do all time writing songs about when you die? Well... Like I said to Sarah McNett just the other day, of course, it's important to know where you're going oh, when you die, and it's wonderful that. that the Lord has promised his own a safe landing. Well, yes, what he that... hasn't promised is the calm voyage on this rough old sea of life. That's but the... many people don't understand that. They think when they take the Lord into their heart, they shouldn't have any more trouble. A woman said to me, yeah, don't I've you known see? People. I don't see why you feel the way you do about the Lord. I don't see that he Keep you away from trouble, but I said, that's why I need him to see me through with trouble. Oh. I need him here and now for living, not just for dying. That, take that's his last right. week, yes, for instance. Got a point. What were you bringing poison oak home to be even her being in bed, set a fire from head to toe, and Obi down with the flu? I've been taking off the moon's room like a stage hand, flying low. Man, when I tripped on that rug and cracked my nose on the corner of the table and had to have four stitches taken in it, oh, well, that, it wasn't in my strength to see me through this week. It's been the Lord's strength. Just like I told her, he doesn't promise we won't have trouble. <laughs> Believe me, we do have plenty of children, everybody else. Honey! We don't have to carry ours alone. We have him to lean upon. I see I'm willing to get the Lord. Oh, my Lord. I can find his strength to see me through my trouble and his wisdom to help me solve my problems. He's got the bet in her teeth. So it's a worry to I still want to be a Christian today. Now, in order to have to claim his promise, it's like a wonderful verse in the Bible. I just say, Susie, I didn't hit the letter. Yeah, let me talk to you. You have to scream. What is the verse, darling? The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust him. It's wonderful to know that he knows me personally. Well, why didn't you say that in the first place? That is one of my favorite verses. Brothers, can we stand and hype this song? There's a, there's a lot more than enough. Then there is a walking around. Some folks never told and said, and that's what folks to do. That's right. They tell you that they're living right. They live the golden rule. But let me tell you, from the sun, you never pass the game. Then they get right with the Lord tonight. Don't gamble or hesitate. There's a lot more laying down. And there is a walking around. There's a lot more folks to see. And there is out again to see. Every day you live in the room. There's a lot more laying down. I know a man, a very fine man, who likes to make it known. Oh, yes. He never drinks nor beats his wife, yet went to heavenly home. But when they pass the parade around, put the nickel in. That nickel won't buy a home on heart. But it makes the devil say, Amen. when they're ironed. Uh, the next you're going to hear, though, aren't women's voices. They're little girls, the blue bonnet, and they're going to sing a song titled Known Only to Him. All right, girls, let's go. When my eyes you die, the man you feel with not a man can I trust But the hand that's given there On a cloud heaven a blind man who plays that way 
By sure accident, one day I did. I was on a lion hunt over in Utah. You can get your maps out, and if you look, you'll see a place called Grass Valley Mountain. Right on top of that mountain was me. I was up there early one morning, just as the sun came up. I was watching my dogs as they were scouting the brush, looking for a lion scent, when suddenly, far across the Nevada desert, 80 miles away, I suddenly saw a bright, blinding flash. I didn't hear any noise, and I thought it must have been a comet striking the earth. I turned to this old cowboy that was with me, and we looked, and we could see a big dust cloud gathering, and I said, you know, John, I just saw a comet strike the earth. Look, way over yonder. See that, John? And then about ten seconds later, that awful crash comes sweeping up the tent. My old horse nearly jumped backwards through his bridle. And that night, as we sat around a campfire... I got to thinking about old Peter. Peter was one of the great apostles. And nearly 2,000 years ago, he didn't know a thing about hydrogen, nitrogen, or oxygen, but he wrote this in the Bible. The day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat, and the earth and the works therein shall be burned up. I thought about it that night. And that's when I pinned the words to that song, known only to him, and known only to him are the great hidden secrets. I'm not going to worry about the future. I'm not going to worry about anything. I'm going to blindly, if you want to put it that way, I'm going to blindly say that I know there is a God. And I know that God that cradled the universe in his mighty hands molded me in my day. The same great spirit that awakens a tiny little seed in the spring, will reach down from some great beyond and awaken my spirit when this body of mine shall fall away. Some people say, well, God isn't always good to people. Yes, he is. Oh, yes. He gives us burdens, that's true. But that night as I sat there by the campfire, I didn't have a pencil to write. And I took a leaded book. And using it for a pencil, I sharpened it and wrote that song, known only to him. Known only to my God is the day of my passion. Known only to God is the place called heaven. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to worry about the burdens I must carry. I'm just thankful. I'm here. In this world of fear and doubt, on my knees at times I ask my Lord, please tell me, Lord, why did you give those you love heavy crosses that they must take? And then on my knees, I hear the answer from heaven. He only gives crosses to those that are trustworthy. Oh, but the wonderful part of it is to give the strength, more strength than just our strength. Yes, it's true. Known only to him. Are the great hidden secrets this whole world is world. Yet through my faith in him I'll fear not the darkness of the shadows when suddenly inside that flame so dim. Thank the Lord I know not what this old future holds. Ah, oh, but the difference is, I know who holds the future. It's a secret no And 
think that's too true. You know it? I know not what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. And I'm not worried about it because it's a secret known only to him. By the way, if I came and knocked on your door and took up a lot of your time trying to sell you commodities, the chances are you wouldn't like me, would you? Well, we won't even disturb the dust on your radio if you'll just sit down for 60 seconds. Perhaps you expect the radio announcer to uh, overestimate just a little in trying to sell your commodities over the radio, don't you? Well, I've got news for you. I wouldn't lie to you if I had to go back to Plunkin' Cow. And I'm going to throw you a great challenge right now. If you're in the market for a TV set, find me a better set than a month's TV at the same price, and I'll get off the air. Why would I come at you with a statement like that? Because you can't get the same high quality at the same low price in any other. The price isn't up with a dealer's profit because there's no dealer. When you buy a month's TV, you buy it direct from the factory office. It's no little concern you're dealing with either. It's the largest direct TV organization in the world. You will find that you'll save yourself many dollars and sometimes hundreds of dollars through getting your TV set from months. I wouldn't use the Bible to sell you a TV set. You know something? I'll use Month TV to sell you the Bible. The Bible is the greatest spot remover in the world. And I wouldn't advertise Month TV if I didn't know what I was talking about. So suggest to your friends that they try Month TV too. Call the factory right now for a free home demonstration within your home within the hour. Oh, look what I found. The ink isn't even dry on it yet. There's a new song to Stuart, and listen to this title. Where would you be in the morning if you had to die tonight? John, why don't you and Benny get the tuba and hey, the organ and, and the wave that tuba and about the key of speed? Now, let's try. We can have John effects and everything. Where would you be in the morning if you had to die tonight? If an angel stood at your front door, would you try to go to tide? Every man will hear his knock, 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 no Oh, wait, wait a minute. Hold everything. That, hold it, hold it. That knock, knock gives me an idea. Friends, we're knocking off right here. That's about the end of the last row. But thank you for listening. Thanks a million. You know something? Poke a load is a long way. And I gotta be there by in the morning. Good day to you. Good luck. And may the good Lord bless you. You'll be listening to the Cowboy Church of the Air, transcribed featuring Columbia recording star Stuart Hamlin with Susie Hamlin, the Prairie Choir, the Brush Arbor Quartet, the Blue Bonnet, and the music of Daryl Rice and his orchestra. All music on this program was written by Stuart Hamlin. He's gonna wash my tears away, then for a hundred years, no way. I got so many missing years that I can count. Mm-hmm.